Hello everyone, Jake here. Today we're gonna make a silicone mold for pin blanks that'll fit in my pressure pot and maximize the size in the pot. Here we go. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. I'll start off by saying everything I talk about in this video, whether it's a product or a video that I've made before, I'll put in the description below in order that it's mentioned in this video so you can go down and look at it. I have three pressure pots, a Harbor Freight pot, the t this ridiculously huge 10 gallon uh, California air tool pot, and then the five gallon California air tool pot that's already set up for resin casting. I have videos on all of those. I've made a video on how to make silicone molds and they work fine, but there's a couple of problems. I've been doing live shows on how to make pin blanks and, and stuff like that. So these are an inch deep. I like to make my molds, my uh, pin blanks an inch that way I have some to cut off so you can see what's inside of it. So, uh, but the problem is I always have these on the bench and I'm pouring in there and then I bring them over here to the pot and I'm spilling everything over here. So one thing I wanna fix is I wanna make this taller and I wanna have a line in there to fill to. So that's, that's pretty easy. And then I also want to maximize the size in that pot right there. These ones, when I made these, I just went six inches, which a normal pin blank is five and a quarter. So that's gonna help out there. Uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use, the other thing I wanna fix is the, the molds I made before were real quick molds out of MDF and I just used screws after a couple uses. It's ruined, it's not gonna work that much. So I wanna make a more robust form to pour the silicone into so I can make multiple of these and I don't have to make more forms. So we're gonna prototype a form to make the silicone blanks uh, molds in and then we're gonna make some pin blanks at the end of it and then Catch me on Instagram because I give the pin blanks away. I have a CNC machine. I'm going to use it on this one. The other video that I used, it was just, hey, you just make, use what you have and use your, your tools in your shop. I have a CNC machine, so that's what I'm going to do. I, I just feel like playing around with it, really. I'll show you how to cut it on the CNC machine, and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you what hardware it takes to put these things together. On this project, I use one inch MDF that I'm cutting right now, and then that other piece there is half inch MDF. I did it because it's cheaper uh, to prototype and then we're going to end up with 12 inch square pieces. We're going to go to the CNC and do some designing. That's not what this video is about, but I used Aspire software. The VCar Pro is about the same. These holes right here, it'll become apparent later, but those ones are just big enough for a bolt to go in. They're not symmetrical, so this is a three piece mold and it's going to only be able to go together one way. And those are the holes that are going to hold the uh, center parts. Uh, this will all become clear here in just one second. And kind of like watching the CNC cut stuff. For this project, we're going to need some threaded inserts. And here they are. This particular one, of course, there'll be a link below. And I, this one comes with the Allen wrench. And... You drill an appropriate size hole. All the information you need to know is right here on the label. Pretty, pretty easy, pretty good little setup right there. Our threaded inserts inside is quarter by 20. You're gonna adjust this according to your project, but mine's quarter by 20 in, inside there. So these threads are quarter by 20 and they're gonna go in there like so. And that's also a hex head. I believe that's a four millimeter, I think. And then you can notice that it has to be a a tapered end. This end right here is tapered. Now we have two and a half inch screws, or they're, they're actually bolts. So they have threaded, they're threaded quarter by 20. Common theme here, quarter by 20. These are actually Phillips. I get these, I got these from the store. I'm showing you that you can get that from the wherever store, hardware store you're gonna go to. These are off of Amazon, I got a whole bag for about the price as it was gonna take me to buy these individually. Actually, this is a lot cheaper. So and this is what's gonna hold the whole thing together. And this will all become clear here pretty soon. So you need some quarter by 20 nuts. That's gonna fit on, on here, nice and easy. And you can buy a box of these nuts Box of nuts, just like I did these washers right here. You need, you need the washers also. You're gonna need some kind of countersink bit. And this, is, this comes in a set, you just get this from a store. I'll have links to this too, but uh, 
they're all different sizes and you just find which one is appropriate to your hopefully you can see that find which one's appropriate to your sh your screw sizes that means when you when you drill this down in when you drill this down in the material and this is going to fit in there okay and then last but not least some paste wax so the material we're going to use is this is a one inch mdf so this is something you have to order but uh, an easier way to do this would to be get a three quarter inch piece and a half inch piece and glue and glue them together to make the one and a quarter. I'm just doing it the way I'm doing because I think messing with the CNC is fun. So here's what it's basically going to look like when it's finished. So these holes that are around the perimeter, I made those just big enough for these to go in. So it'll pretty much index it. It's going to keep this, of course I'm going to put them in from the underneath side, but it's going to make it to where this all is going to line up on the inside. So that's how those work. And you notice this is a half inch above that. So that's the, going to be the bottom of the mold. And we have to think about it all the way upside down. Here's the t very top of the mold. This is the middle part of the mold. And here's all of the blanks, which we have these holes right here are drilled big enough to put the threaded inserts in. All right now here's the bottom of it and I'm going to take and ease these edges here. And the, the reason why I want to do that is that's going to create a line after we pour the silicone in it and we get the silicone mold out, it's going to make a line in there and I'll know when to stop pouring. And then I'll have this much to where I can move it around and it's not going to spill out. So I'm going to go ahead and get a Dremel tool. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to coat all of this in here with paste wax so that the silicone won't stick to it. And it'll protect it. And underneath here, this countersink bit I was talking about, I'm going to go ahead and countersink every one of these. These will fit down in there flush. And I'll show you that as we go. So it's basically the three level system. And then these go in there. These inserts are going to screw in there. I'm, I have to countersink that also so that the top will fit in there. That'll go in there and then it'll bolt from underneath. So now you kind of see how it's going to go together. So I'm going to go ahead and put, um, I'm going to lightly sand in here. I'm going to put super glue on here. See how it's pretty porous right there. I'm going to sand it a little bit. I'm going to put some super glue in there and then put some uh, paste wax over it all, assemble it, and we'll be ready to put some silicone in there. This half inch MDF is nowhere near as porous as the one inch. So I'm not going to mess around with super glue or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and put the uh, paste wax on there and we'll be just fine. And get it in between there real good so that uh, this thing will come apart easy and the silicone will release from it easy. We're also going to put uh, mold release on here too. I think the super glue thing would work good normally, but it was soaking in a lot and I don't want this thing to swell up and act crazy and stuff. So I just went with straight paste wax on this whole thing. So we're going to see how that goes. Now the next step is I'm going to put these onto these with these bolts and I'm going to, I'm going to put this thing together. Next time you see it, it's going to be together. There you go. One of the things I can already tell is when I put the threaded inserts in, they might not be all the way straight, so that's going to make that sit funny. I'm going to leave it like that for this first pour, just so we're going to see what it'll do to the silicone mold. So next thing up, we're going to start mixing some silicone. So now that we're at the point that we're going to put some silicone in these molds, and before we talk about silicone, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning community. They have yearly subscriptions are less than $10 a month. That's pretty good. First 1,000 subscribers of mine that go to the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. They have thousands of classes on loads and loads of topics. They have illustration, photography, film and video, lots more. They even have a resin art class that I may just have to take. The class I've taken so far as some DSLR classes, I get some camera classes, but I also have additional information after becoming more familiar with my camera. And they had the information on lighting and sound. And what's cool about these videos is they're broken down to the smallest detail, like five minute little sections of the class and you can stop and come back. It remembers where you're at. So you don't have to sit down and take the entire class. You can just take a little bit at a time when you have time. Uh, I believe that my videos have gotten better because of those DSL, DSLR classes. They have new classes all the time. The one I want to take next is video for Instagram, tell an engaging story in less than one minute by Halanese Navarez. I look forward to taking that one. Just remember the first thousand subscribers of mine that go in the description box below and hit the link, get a free trial of premium membership. So thank you, Skillshare. Back to the video. I've done several molds with silicone before and I've used some that uh, don't need degassing and it's just not as good when you're using a pressure pot. This stuff is Plat 25 from Illumilite and if I was gonna mass produce these to sell, I would use something like this or something similar. But today I'm doing a prototype and I wanna know quickly, like this will take, um, you know, you have a lot of working time and then it, you gotta let it cure for so long, whatever, and that's, that's good things if you have the time to wait. But I don't wanna wait. I'm gonna use this stuff for a couple reasons. One, I've had this for way longer than probably what the shelf life is and I need to use it. A second reason is it has six minutes of working time and then it's silicone. <laughs> so you, you need to mix it up quickly, pour it, and then 30 minutes later, you can demold this stuff. So those are all positives. The negative on this is um, you don't even have time to degas it and then get, and then when I use, make it into a pin blank and then I put it in a pressure pot, then that's when it's not gonna be as smooth a surface when you're pulling your products out of the silicone. I just made a hand the other day, just messing around and it's with this stuff and it's i have to sand it it's a rough surface because when you put it in the pressure pot and it has air in the silicone it de it deforms it and sometimes it makes spikes and that's what this is doing it's it's it made an indention and then the silica the, re the resin goes in there and it makes just not as good as a a thing now this is a cool project and it'll be okay but if you want to make a quality high quality thing, you need to have a silicone that you'll degas. And I'll stop talking about that now. Uh, the good, the, once again, the good thing about this stuff is I'll be done today. I could be pouring, we're gonna pour some pin blanks today. So let's get some of this mixed up. And this is one to one by weight or volume. So pretty much they weigh the same. You can use a scale or you can just do it by volume. I'm gonna use a scale so that I know how much they're gonna use so that when I go to use these, if, if I end up making a few of these, I'm gonna make them out of this. So uh, it'll give me a, a way to, it'll give me a reference of how much of this I'm gonna need. And then you can figure out pricing. If you're making something to sell, you can figure out pricing, all kinds of stuff like that's gonna go into this. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stir this up. Anytime you use any silicones, uh, get the, stuff off of the bottom. It's, uh, some of the stuff's going to go to the bottom and settle, so stir up really good. And then we're going to start uh, pouring into our molds. So this Mold Star 16, it, it's, uh, it, just like I mentioned, I just put that stick in there. Look at that clump at the bottom. So I think most, most uh, silicones are going to do that. So you have to you have to really get after it, get down there and get that stuff uh, broke up and get it mixed in. And uh, I, use a, I use some hardwood. This is actually Purple Heart. <laughs> if you try to use just regular stir sticks or whatever, it's not gonna be strong enough to do that. So I'll get the stuff mixed up and, and weighed out. And then when I get ready to pour, we'll be back. I put 300 grams of PAR-A in there. Now I gotta put it in here. 
as soon as I start, I'm going to start the timer. I have six minutes, so I don't have a lot of time to be messing around. I have the mold right here leveled, and I don't expect this to fill this up by any means. So I'm going to get you a better view. You should be able to see everything now. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this. Probably put a little fast motion on there or whatever. Here we go. I'm going to start the timer right now. And it's a little warm in here too, so here we go. That's it. The good thing about silicone is it sticks to itself. So I don't need to make calculations on this or whatever. I just need to shoot low really, because I fill this up, pour into here, and then it's short. So I'll be able to tell if I'm about halfway there or not. And I can adjust the next pour to that. This stuff is really expensive. So you don't want to waste it, but that being said, you can also reuse it if you have a mold that, like the one for that hand. Uh, if I want to reuse that for something else, I can cut it up and use it as a filler in the next mold or whatever. You're gonna mix this so you don't see any swirls in there. And I'm almost there already, and I'm almost two minutes, so one good thing to do is look underneath. I got a little bit of white right there still, or the lighter color. So scrape the sides, make sure Otherwise you're gonna have a spot in there that doesn't cure and it'll be nice silicone and then a, a gooey spot. <laughs> and it's a little hot in my shop today too, so uh, that might affect the uh, working time I have with this stuff. Two minutes and 20 seconds. We got six minutes, so we're almost halfway there. And I don't see any swirls up here. I don't see any down here, but you always want to make sure you mix to the best of your ability. But we don't want this stuff turning into silicone in the bucket either. So we're almost at three minutes and I don't see any swirls. So I really don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to pour. Once again, this is leveled and I'll check it throughout the pours too. You wanna to hit one of these corners and let it just, let it flow by itself. Uh, and I want you to be able to see it also. Not a lot of space to let that flow. I find this corner right here probably be all right. You pour it from high like that, it kind of helps it work some of the air out, which we already know this isn't going to be as good as degassed silicone anyway. So I'm not hoping for the moon on this one. I just want to see if it works. We're at five minutes right now. So messing around time is kind of over. You won't even be able to see where we started pour, where we stopped pouring and started pouring, you won't even be able to see it on the next. After after it's all finished, you won't even be able to see that. There we go. Now we mix up another batch, and I'll keep track of how much I'm using. And then when I'm on the last pour, we'll come back. Try to hit these corners here best I can. The bad thing about this is I want to get it poured quickly, but that doesn't give it time to to rush in and where it needs to go, but it's a, uh, it'll still be all right in the end. And we're gonna be a little bit short, but that's okay. I'll check the level again and then top it off. No big deal. On this pour here, I put part A in and then I overshot with part B. So I had to put more of part A, which in turn you see that I overflowed it pretty bad. Just a, not that big a deal, but we worked with it. Yep, that happened. <laughs> It'll be all right. So this is a couple hours later. I'm about to pull these out of the molds. Why? This is the one that I've shown the whole time, but this is the one that has block molds in it. And you'll see here in a second. 
This one I overfilled, as you can tell, and it's probably not gonna be level. Um, of course, this one will be for me or whatever, and I'll figure out, I'll just take the lessons I learned off of it. And this one, I hit it right, almost perfect. So just to show you, practice makes perfect. I'm gonna demold these real quick, and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how I figure out how much resin goes in each one of them. This is part of the process where you can kind of figure out where you need to do th things a little bit different. The top and bottom came off pretty easily. Just give some patience and let it pop off of there. I would have made one of these sides able to come off to make it easier. I'm gonna go ahead and take off, take apart this one off camera. It's probably a little bit difficult. I'm just gonna get a knife and cut wherever I overflowed it. I'll cut around that stuff and we'll make the best of it. Here's the one I've showed you us working on the whole time. And it's also the one that I overfilled. So all you're gonna do in a situation like that is get your little knife and cut off that flashing and clean it up and then we'll be good to go. Now I will have to make sure this is level. Uh, and when I do it next time, I know how much silicone to use so I'm not gonna overflow it. We're gonna fill these things with rice and see how much, that'll give us a good idea of how much uh, resin these are going to take. So I'll clean this up and we come back. We'll be putting rice in these and figuring out how much they take. I have this full of rice and we're going to put it in there. We'll put it in each one of these and I'll fill it up to the line. Uh, we, we did create a line whenever we made that form. So I'm going to fill it up to the line and all these, uh, dump it in a big bucket and then put it in there. Hopefully it'll fit in there. And then, uh, we'll know how much resin we need. I'm gonna call that good. Have a big bucket, it's clean. If I try to dump that in a small bucket, you're just asking for trouble. There's 32 ounces, somewhere about 32. So if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go ahead and hit right at 32, or try to be right about there, just to show you it's gonna be a little bit short. So like if I was really doing this, I'd probably go up to 40 and then pour that. But since we're, uh, since we're, I'm showing you that this is a prototype and this is the kind of stuff you gotta go through, I'm gonna go ahead and just try to hit it right at 32 when I pour into this one. I'll do the same for this one, but I'll spare you that. All right, this one's gonna, this one, we had 24 ounces of rice in this one. Of course, once again, uh, we're gonna come up short, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to make it uh, right at 24. But I told you earlier about the inserts not being in there square or whatever. I'm really not mad about that because it left us a line. It leaves us a line. You can see, see the lines right here. That's what I'm gonna pour to, and that's, that'll be an inch, and then I have that much above that that it's gonna have room, so I'm not spilling it everywhere. If you look on the sides here, these lines right here, that's all that did was make a little bit of a, a line, so I'm really not that mad about it, but I will fix it, though, before if I go any further with this. But as far as the mold, it's a good-looking, good-looking mold. And, Put the little Jake blanks in there. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure these are clean. I'm gonna put this uh, UMR mold release, resin to resin, silicone to resin, silicone to silicone. So I'll put this on there. It'll make your molds last longer. It'll make your uh, products come out easier, all of that. This is, I highly recommend that using this anytime you're doing uh, any kind of mold making uh, or casting. This is for plastic. Silicone. <laughs> so I'll get this stuff ready. I'll get the, um, the resin divvied up and everything. I'll be, when I'm ready to pour, I'll go ahead and, and we'll, we'll come back when I'm there. So we measured 24 ounces of rice in here. I'm, losing, I'm using a Lumalite Clear Slow, which is, you have to measure it by weight. One's heavier, the, heavier than the other. So I ended up with 26 ounces which is more importantly, it's 780 grams. 
So I'm almost getting ready to pour this stuff. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna fill one up, fill one up, and I'll probably start a little bit early. I usually wait till a certain temperature, but I'll probably go a little bit early so I have more time to pour. That's more important right now than getting a swirl effect or whatever. So it's almost, it's 90 right now, which is pretty good. One last little mix and then we'll start pouring it and see how close it is. That's the most important thing right now is seeing um, how much resin this thing's going to take. And I'll probably do a couple at a time. So here we go. Can you see? All right, I'm going to start right here, a little bit in. Of course, it's hard to get a, a good swirling action when you're going into single blanks, but when you're using, I found out when you're using liquid diamonds, they don't like to be poured in a big blank like that other mold. So that's why I made this one pretty much. When you're using liquid diamonds, it, um, it gets super hot in a, in a block mold and then you're uh, you're not doing very well after I mean it's, it's a cool cool effect but if you want to use colors you want the colors to stay the colors that they are and not a burnt looking color once again I'm not going for the most beautiful blanks here I'm going for pretty much measuring and then at the end of it, we'll have some cool, they'll be cool. We'll swirl them up a little bit, get it in the pressure pot. Of course, this fits nicely in the five gallon pot. So it'll fit real easily into the 10 gallon pot. So I have these are mostly past a little bit past the line, but now they're they're still not going to spill everywhere when I'm trying to move them. And I'm going to just get all of it into this one. I'm probably my hands right probably right in the way. I want to see how short we're going to be, so I can adjust. So I can adjust later. Get this in the pressure pot. I'm pretty sure you can see it from over there. And I'm already happy that I'm not spilling this everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to do the other one off camera and I'll have all the measurements and everything. When we come back, I'll have them out of the pressure pot and we'll be able to look at them and I'll, and I'll give you my final thoughts on doing this prototyping. So it's three hours later. As you can see, it makes pretty good use of the space in there. And when you go to put it in, it's not, it's not so close that you can't get it in. There's some room. Uh, so when you're in a hurry, you're not gonna hit it or anything like that. So pretty good. Now uh, let's get it on the table and uh, demold these things. I was one short on this one. That might be three quarters of an inch. That might be okay to send to someone, but we were a whole big one. So that's one thing I got to figure out, but that's part of prototyping is we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get better at it. And uh, you make it better every time until you come up with your, your finished products. If you've enjoyed the video so far, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. That lets more people see it. Uh, go ahead and consider subscribing and hit the bell so you get notified of future content just like this. And I do have a weekly pin blank giveaway on Instagram, so go ahead and head on over there and get some free pin blanks. In case you were wondering about the, uh, the bottoms of these, all these are just metal things off of buckets and I put in there. This happens to be uh, where we were going with this whole thing. I'm eventually gonna make these uh, the blank forms the what you pour the silicone in uh, out of hdpe so i've i've cut some of the pieces out and if that looks familiar i'm just going to use that as the bottom and then that way if you do spill something it'll just it'll just come right off of there so 
uh, I wanted to fix several problems with this. Was One was it wasn't deep enough, so whenever I pick it up, I was, I'm spilling it on the way over to the pot. Well, I fixed that. And then I would maximize the amount of pin blanks I can get out of each pot load. And I think I did that. And now I can get it in there, it maximizes it, but I'm still getting it in there easily, pretty much. So this is where there's gonna be, there will be some changes like uh, the middle piece, I would probably make it where at least one of the sides comes off so it'd be easier to get out. And if I wanted to put some text in there with the CNC machine or whatever, if I wanted to say how many grams it takes or things like that, I could put it in there and then on the side of the mold, it would say whatever I wanted it to say on there. Uh, several things that, that uh, uh, need improvement, but this, this was about how to prototype and how, how to get your mind working and, and how we're gonna solve problems. So I think we did that. Uh, I used Alumilite Clear Slow and I used Eye Candy Pigments colors on these. Uh, links to everything will be below. And also, don't forget Skillshare. The first thousand people that go down the link below get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So go check that out. Um, I think that's about it for this video. We'll see you guys next time and y'all be good.